Hey boys, it's Harm Nan. Today we're going to be going over my picks for the top 10 best SUVs in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now some of these SUVs are going to be on this list because of what they can provide for you, whether that is Imani Tech or other cool features like that, or they're on this list for pure performance capabilities, meaning that they're just really fast, they handle really well, stuff like that. Before we get into the video, subscribe to my channel if you guys are new, leave a like if you enjoy, dislike if you don't, and let's go ahead and get started. At number 10, we have the Declassy Granger 3600 LX, coming in at $1,500,000 to $2,000,000 if you don't have the trade price. Now the Declassy Granger 3600 LX actually had a price increase about a year ago, which does kind of suck, but at the same time, it was maybe a little bit warranted, except I don't know why they didn't do it to all of the other Imani Tech SUVs, because I feel like the Granger is probably one of the worst ones, but nonetheless, it's still a pretty good vehicle because it does, of course, have Imani Tech, meaning that it has the armor plating. It also has optional front-mounted machine guns, an oil slick proximity mine dropper, bullet resistant windows. Overall, it is a pretty good vehicle. Now, the only unfortunate thing about the Granger 3600 LX is that it is actually slower than the Granger 3500 LX that has been in the game since 2013. So that's kind of crazy. This thing's pretty slow. It's not that fast. It does look a lot cooler than the old one. It does have a lot more customization, which is cool. Um, I mean, the old one had no customization, so I guess anything's really an improvement. But overall, the 3600 LX is definitely a pretty good SUV. It's kind of budget friendly if you have the trade price at least. However, there are some better SUVs that have the same capabilities coming up on this list a little bit later. So let's go ahead and get into number nine. At number nine, we have the Enos Huntley S, a budget friendly option coming in at $195,000 only. The Huntley S was added with the High Life DLC back in like 2014, maybe 2015. It's been out for a very, very long time, and ever since it came out, I was always very impressed with the performance of this SUV. For a long time, I actually think that this was the best performing SUV in the game. At least it wouldn't surprise me if it was. It has really good acceleration, a pretty good top speed, and awesome handling. It is, of course, all-wheel drive, as you would probably expect. And it also has a little bit in the way of customization, which is a nice feature for a vehicle that is so cheap. Overall, I think it's pretty good looking. I think it does look a little bit like a Toad, but other than that, it is a really neat SUV. It's kind of like the Bentley Bentayga in real life, except this thing came out before the Bentayga existed, so I'm not really sure how Rockstar knew that Bentley was gonna make an SUV, but good for them, I guess. Next up at number eight, we have the Vapid Aleutian, coming in at $1,835,000. The Aleutian is, of course, pretty new. It's based off of the Ford Expedition, with elements of the Ford Explorer in it as well. Overall, it's a pretty interesting SUV. It's not that fast in a straight line, but of course, what it lacks in speed is, of course, made up for in the fact that it has Imani Tech capabilities, with the armor plating upgrade, as well as the missile lock on jammer and the oil slick proximity mine dropper. Now, unfortunately, it can't take a lot of damage. It can only take about four RPGs, but still, that is not too bad. Overall, a decent vehicle. It definitely is pretty good in the corners and off-road. However, in a straight line, it does suffer a little bit. It is a little bit on the slow side, which does kind of suck, but the Aleutian is still a pretty cool SUV. The only real problem that I have with it is that the headlight glass texture on the passenger side is not done and it really bugs you once you notice it. So that does suck, so do keep that in mind with the Aleutian. Don't worry though, we got some more SUVs on this list that you can buy instead of this one. At number seven, we have the Lampadati Novak, coming in at $608,000, arguably one of the best bang for your buck SUVs in the entire game. This thing's got it all. It's got really good handling, it's got a really good top speed, it's got great acceleration, it is of course all wheel drive, it has a little tiny bit of customization, not a whole lot, but not like nothing either. It's probably got more than the Huntley S, I would say, and about similar to maybe the Aleutian, maybe a little bit less. But for $608,000, you really cannot go wrong with the Novak. It is actually a crazy looking SUV, crazy performing SUV. I'm not really 100% sure that I love how it looks, but other than that, you can't really knock it. It's a really good SUV for the money. Definitely one that I would not shy away from. Next up at number six, we have the Albany Cavalcade XL, which is also brand new, coming in at $1,665,000. 
Now, unfortunately, this thing doesn't really do anything very well. It, it kind of completely sucks in almost every way. It's got a really low top speed. It's got pretty trash acceleration. However, what it does have is really exceptional handling. This is maybe the best handling SUV in the entire game. Now, of course, you will have to put a spoiler option on the vehicle to get this, and the spoiler options are kind of ugly, but this thing handles incredibly well. That is the one thing that this vehicle does just exceptionally well. A lot of people also really love the look of the Albany Cavalcade XL, so there is that, I guess, and it does have a decent amount of customization. It's not my personal favorite SUV, but I thought putting it this high on the list was pretty reasonable because I know a lot of people really, really love this thing. That's pretty much it for the Cavalcade XL. Let's talk about number five. At number five, we have the Ubermacht Rebla GTS coming in at $1,183,000. Now, personally, I think this thing is a lot better than the Cavalcade XL, which is why I've put it ahead of it on this list. It's based off of the BMW X5 in real life, and you can make it look like a very base model X5, you can make it look like an X540i, or of course you can make it look like a full-blown X5M, and it is really cool to have the ability to do all of that. This thing has a ton of customization, it's like any other modern Ubermacht in the game. You can do all the sort of BMW mods that people do in real life to this vehicle, which is really, really awesome. Now on top of its great looks, it's not a bad price for what you're getting because the performance on this thing is crazy. Super fast in a straight line, really really good handling, all wheel drive of course, and you know the acceleration is going to be nuts as well. The Ubermacht Rebla GTS, not a bad vehicle in the slightest, definitely one that I would honestly recommend looking into, almost more so than any other vehicle on this list. We do have some ahead of it, but it is a great SUV, don't get it twisted. At number four, we have the Gallivanter Baller STD coming in at $1,715,000. This thing is really interesting because it has a Monty Tech, but it does not have the armor plating upgrade. So it's got the missile lock on Jammer, but no armor plating upgrade. For the money, this thing is actually really, really good, despite it being quite expensive. I mean, 1.7 mil is, is not like nothing for an SUV. That's, that's quite expensive, but the Baller STD is stupidly fast in a straight line. This thing will walk like any other SUV that came out with the same DLC. It is crazy, crazy quick in a straight line. Of course, it is all wheel drive. It has a super high top speed in the 120s somewhere. I would say high 120s, honestly. The acceleration gets it there super fast and the handling is great as well. And on top of this, it's got a lot of customization and being able to have the missile lock on jammer on it as well just makes it that much more worth. Overall, the STD, definitely the best Gallivanter baller in Grand Theft Auto Online by a long shot. At number three, we have the Enus Jubilee coming in at $1,237,500. If you got the trade price, if you don't have the trade price, it's going to run you $1,650,000. The Jubilee is an awesome SUV though because it's a first gen Imani Tech SUV with performance that's a lot better than the Declassy Granger 3600LX that we went over at the start of this video. It's got the front mounted machine guns, it's got the armor plating upgrade, it's got the oil slick proximity mine dropper, it's got the missile lock on jammer, and of course it has the bullet resistant windows just in a much better package than the 3600. This thing's very quick in a straight line. It has a very high top speed, it has great handling, it's got nice ground clearance so you can take it off-road if you need to. Overall, there's nothing about the Jubilee that is really bad, there's just some vehicles that are a little bit faster than it, but arguably this could be the number one SUV on this list, in my opinion at least. At number two, we have the Fister Astron Custom with HSW, coming in at a very expensive $1,720,000 plus an additional $395,000 for the HSW upgrade for the Fister Astron Custom. Now, of course, this is exclusive to the Xbox Series S and X and PlayStation 5 version of Grand Theft Auto 5. So you do have to keep that in mind. You can get the regular Fister Astron on any platform, but it's not the Custom. The Custom has a wide body kit on it and it honestly looks way cooler. It has pretty much the exact same customization as the regular Astron, just in wide body form, if that makes sense. And of course, being that it is HSW, it does have some of those dry carbon pieces that you can put on it, which is pretty cool. The Fister Astron Custom with the HSW upgrade is 
undeniably the fastest SUV in Grand Theft Auto Online. It goes stupidly fast in a straight line. The acceleration's nuts. And due to the wide body kit, it has a little bit of extra handling ability because it is just a little bit wider. So that is really nice. Overall, it is a great SUV. It does tend to have a little bit of an understeer issue, I do find, but it's not that big of a deal. You can get over it for sure. Once you start going in a straight line, you're gonna be totally fine. Overall, it is a great SUV. Definitely a little bit on the expensive side, but you are getting what you're paying for. It is just such a shame that it is only on those new gen platforms. And at number one, the long time running best SUV in Grand Theft Auto Online is the Pegasi Toros. Coming in at $498,000, less than half a million dollars, this thing will get you almost the same top speed as the Fister Astron Custom with HSW. It will get you almost as good of acceleration and handling that is nearly the same. The Tauros is insane. It is based off the Lamborghini Urus in real life, of course. It's all wheel drive, it accelerates like crazy, it has a super high top speed of about 126, I do believe it is. And the handling is not bad either. Now, some people say they don't like the Tauros's handling, that it jumps up too much. I do kind of get what they're saying, but on flat ground, this thing is crazy. And even in the corners, it's not bad either. The Tauros also has a ton of customization. It has so many options that you can do to it which is just awesome. Overall, the Tauros just simply is the best SUV in Grand Theft Auto Online in terms of pure performance. Now, again, like I said, with the Enos Jubilee, you could put it at number one in terms of the overall best SUV because of its Amani Tech and all of its other capabilities that it has. But for right now, I'm putting the Pegasi Tauros at number one in its rightful spot, like less than 500 grand and you're getting an SUV that is this good. That's crazy. That is crazy to me. This thing is super sick definitely make sure to pick up a Pegasi Tauros if you don't have one already. Anyway, guys, there you have it. That's been my list for the top 10 SUVs in Grand Theft Auto Online. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like is of course appreciated. If not, dislike. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are new, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care. Peace.